So the ends of the 0.4 meter bar remain in contact with their respective support surfaces. End B has a velocity of 0.5 meters per second and an acceleration of 0.3 meters per second squared in the directions shown. So we're asked to determine the angular velocity of the bar and the acceleration of end A. So the trick with this question um, is first of all, we need to work out what the angular velocity of the bar is. Because when you go to use the angular acceleration equations, um, you end up needing to substitute that in. So that's what I'm going to start with. So we'll do the velocity analysis first. So for our velocity analysis, what we're going to be looking at is comparing the velocity of the two endpoints. And we know that it's going to be equal to the difference in their absolute velocities. So I'm going to go through again and solve for each of these individually. Alright, so we know that the velocity of A relative to B is going to be equal to the angular velocity at which these points rotate relative to each other multiplied by their relative radius. Okay. So substituting into this equation, I'm going to assume that omega AB is going in the positive direction, assuming that I use the regular coordinate system. So in this equation, that's going to become omega AB gets a K because it's rotating about the z-axis. And then we just need to work out what the relative um, radius is. So we can do that by taking out the triangle which sits in here. Okay, so we know that it's got a 30 degree angle and a 0.4 meter long hypotenuse. And we're looking for A relative to B. So that's going to be this direction for the arrows, from A to B. So up here, it's going to be in the negative x direction, and the length is going to be 0 0.4 sine 30 i, and then positive y direction, so plus 0 0.4 cos 30 j. So when we expand this out, um, we get... So negative 0 0.2 omega AB, and we get K times I, remembering using this diagram, that K times I is in the direction of the arrow, so it's going to be positive. So it gets a J on the end. So then we have omega times 0.4 cos 30, which is 0 0.346. And we get k times j, which is going to be negative, i. All right, so that's the first term worked out. So let's move on to the next one, which is the velocity of a. So this point here, we're told, has to stay in contact with the wall. So you need to make a decision on which way it's going to go. Now, I'm going to assume that it's going to go down, but it doesn't really matter, because if you assume it's going the wrong way, it will come out negative and you'll just be able to flip it over, only because I think it's quite easy to see that if this one is going to go down the ramp, that this one's going to have to go down the wall. So, the velocity of A then, in vector form, it, we can just write this as negative Vaj, because we know it's just going to be able to move in that one direction. So that was pretty easy to deal with. So last one is the velocity of B, and again we're going to need to put this into vector form. So we know that it's got a 0.5 magnitude. We just need to split it into the i and j directions. And we know that this is going to be a right angle in here. And this is going to have to be a 15 degree angle. Um, so that 15 plus the 90 degree right angle add up to 105. So that's also going to be the angle Oop, that sits in here for the vector. So VB is going to equal 0 0.5 cos 15i, going in the positive i direction, and minus 0 0.5 sine 15j. So it's going in the negative y direction. So this we can also simplify down slightly for the numbers.
and we get that. So now we should be able to determine what the velocity is, um, angular velocity is I should say, that we're going to need in the next part of this question. So subbing everything into the original equation. end up with that. Sorry about it, getting a bit messy. So we should be able to take out the i and the j components separately to solve for them. So taking out just the i ones, so that's the left hand side and this is the right. Oops. So we can solve for omega ab And it comes out to be 1.396 radians per second. So it's come out to be a positive value, which means we assumed it in the correct direction to start with. So it's going to be anti-clockwise. Alright, so now we should be able to move on to our... Um, real real question which was trying to work out the angular velocity of the bar and also what the acceleration of the end of the bar at A is as well okay so let's mark them on this diagram so I'll assume it's going in the positive direction as well and let's assume that AA is the same direction as the VA vector as well so it's going to be a very similar procedure to what we just did. We're going to look at the relative um, this time acceleration and it's going to be between, be between A and B. So this is the equation we're trying to fill in this time. All right, so let's start with the acceleration of A relative to B. And this time we're going to need to consider both the normal and tangential directions of this. Okay, so the normal direction equation is omega cross omega cross r. So for A and B, because we're looking at their relative motion and we know they're connected to each other through the rigid body, omega is just going to be omega AB and r is going to be again the radius of A relative to B. If it's A slash B here, it needs to be A slash B here as well. So this is the normal part of the equation. The tangential part is equal to alpha cross r. So alpha is the angular velocity between the two points, which we've called alpha ab. And again, the radius is the same as before, so a slash b. So now we need to substitute into this equation, and this is why we went to the effort of working out omega ab beforehand. So this can slot straight in, so it's in the anti-clockwise or positive direction, so it's going to be 1.396k. And a bit of a trick here, we could just sub in again, we know this, and we know the radius of A relative to B, we already worked that out. But this is always going to be the same as what you got from your velocity analysis. So if we scroll up and look for it, we said that omega AB cross the radius of A relative to B was equal to this expression here. So what we can do, we now know omega AB, we can just substitute straight into that. So let me just pop this in down here. I know you can't see it, but... Okay, so just scroll up for you now. So you can see all I've done is just substituted in the um, omega value that we solved for and just left it in the form that we had already simplified it down to before in terms of just i's and j's. So the last thing that we need to do is substitute in alpha cross r. Alpha we're assuming is the positive direction, so it just gets a k. And we already had the radius of a relative to b before. Again, if I scroll up, it was this one in here. So I can just substitute that in. Uh, 
in fact I had simplified it down on my book so let me just substitute that version in so it's negative 0.2i plus 0.346j all right so that looks a bit messy but from here it's just a matter of simplifying it to make it look a bit nicer all right so if you go ahead and do this you end up with 0 0.390i take 0.674j from this first term and then from the second part we get that alrighty so now we just need to work on these other two terms in here so oh, dropped off an alpha in here sorry so let's go to the acceleration of A now. So this one's pretty easy to simplify. Um, we assume that the acceleration of A was just going to be directed straight downwards. Um, so in vector form, that's just going to mean we need to put negative J on it since it's going in the negative Y direction. Oop. So we can write this as negative AAJ. Alright, so one left, and that's the acceleration of B that we need to simplify down. And again, we can use the fact that we had a 15 degree angle in here to work out what the acceleration um, is in the vector form. So let me just draw the arrow. So it's 15 degrees in here. And we know it's got a 3 meters per second squared magnitude. So this one we can write as in the negative x direction, it'll be negative 3 cos 15i. And in the positive y direction, it's going to be positive 3 sine 15j. So if we want, we can simplify this. Okay. So finally, all we need to do is go back and put all these simplifications into our original equation and solve for the unknowns. So let me write that out in full. Okay, so that's what our equation becomes. So again, we've just got the two unknowns, the linear acceleration and the angular acceleration. Um, this time I'm going to start with solving for the i components, and then we'll go with the j's. So taking everything out that's got an i in it, get that and remember that this has a double negative in there so we can solve for alpha a b and it comes out to be 0 0.289 radians per second squared so since it came out to be a positive value that means it's going in the positive direction like we assumed um, which is anti-clockwise and for J, taking out all those parts, we get that. So we can solve for the acceleration in A, remembering that we've already got this um, alpha term. comes out to be 0 0.654 meters per second squared and again it's come out to be a positive value so it's going in the direction that we assumed which was downward to begin with. So they're the two answers that it looked for in this question. Um, so that's all there is to do.